In this lesson, I want us to learn how to decide which is the best method to use when solving a quadratic equation because we've learned three methods now. We've learned how to factor and how to use the square root property and how to use the formula. So now, how do you choose which will do the best job on your problem? Because it's, it's all about, you know, if they all can solve the problem, it's all about choosing the one that works the easiest and the quickest for you. So, we said factoring and square root property and formula. Now, if you can factor, we've seen that factoring can be pretty fast. So I would say try that first. But if you don't think that you're going to be able to factor quickly, see if you've got a square root property problem. And you'll know if you have a square root property, if you have no x term, or if you have a squared binomial. Either one of those situations, use the square root property. And if you can't do either one of these, use the formula as a last resort. So let's take a look at a few examples together. Here we've got 3x squared minus 4x equals 4. So you won't know if you can factor or not until you see all the terms on one side of the equal mark. Plus, you know, we can rule out square root property right now because we do have an x term. So we know that we're not going to need the square root property. Therefore, the other two methods require us to have a zero on the right side. So we may as well go ahead and do that. So let's see if we can factor. First times first would be 3x times 1x. The signs need to be different, and last times last could be uh, 2 times 2. So let's stick the 2's in here and see if they are going to give us the middle term we want. And I'm getting positive 6x and minus 2x. 6x minus 2x is positive 4x, but I wanted negative 4x. So all I have to do is switch the signs. And now we have negative 6x plus 2x adds up to negative 4x. Okay, so this is great. We got it factored, and we didn't have to deal with all the radicals and fractions in the formula. So now this and this each give me a solution. If 3x plus 2 equals 0, then 3x equals negative 2. Then x is negative 2 thirds. If x minus 2 is... Uh, equal to 0, then x equals 2. So I get two solutions. I get negative 2 thirds and positive 2 as my solution. Okay, here is our second example. 3x minus 4 squared equals 16. So this is an obvious case for the square root property because we do have this squared binomial. So that makes the square root property really easy to use. Let's do the square root of the left and the square root of the right. And remember, when we do the square root of both sides, we have to put a plus minus there. So now I have to continue solving for x. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides and divide both sides by 3. So x equals 4 plus or minus 4 all over 3. And this gives me two answers. 4 plus 4 is 8, so one of my answers is 8 over 3. And the other one, 4 minus 4, gives me 0, and 0 over 3 is 0, so my second answer is 0. One of my answers is 8 thirds, and the other answer is 0. And so, and there we are. So, you know, this, I still say this is lots less work than you would have had if you had multiplied this all out and used the quadratic formula. Okay, 5x squared equals 2x minus 3. Let's get all the terms on one side and see if it can be factored. So first times first is 5x times 1x. The signs need to be the same and they both need to be negative. And 3 has got to be 3 times 1. That's the only way to get 3. So now, if I check my outer plus inner, well, that's going to add up to negative 8x, which is not right. 
and if I switch them it won't work either so I've just decided to go ahead and use the formula on this one because factoring didn't look like it was about to work alright so here are my a B and C so x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, now go back and simplify. Negative negative 2 is positive 2. Under the radical, negative 2 squared makes 4. 4 times 5 times 3 makes 20 times 3 is 60 and in the denominator we get 10. So now 4 minus 60 is negative 54, or sorry, negative 56, and in the denominator 10. Now 4 will go into 56. So actually 4 is, uh, 4 will go into 56 19 times. So what I did here was I said the square root of the 4 is 2, and the square root of the negative is i, and the 19 is still under the radical. And then in the denominator we still have 10. So now look, 2 and 2 and 10 can all be divided by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, 2i divided by 2 is 1i, and in the denominator 10 divided by 2 is 5. and I see a little error here. I had accidentally put pluses and minuses in both places. So this answer contains the plus and this answer contains the minus. And I believe that will fix it up for us. Okay, let's do a little more together. Here I have 2x minus 5 times x plus 1 equals 2. So in this case, I cannot right now set my two factors equal to zero because I don't have zero over here. I've got two. So what I'm going to have to do in order to get this two off of the right side, I'm going to have to use the FOIL method to multiply these two factors back together. 2x times 1x gives us 2x squared. Outer plus inner would be 2x minus 5x. That gives us negative 3x and last times last gives us negative 5 and now in order to get my 0 here let's do minus 2 on both sides and that will give us uh, negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7 so we end up with 2x squared minus 3x minus 7 equals 0 okay we should try to factor this first so let's just think about you know, if I set down 2x times 1x as my first times first, and 1 times 7 is my last times last, is there any way I can arrange it so that I get 3 in the middle? And I think there's, you'll be pretty quick to say that we, we're not going to be able to get that 3 in the middle. So let's go ahead and use the formula on this. A can be 2, B can be negative 3, and C can be negative 7. And now plug straight into the formula x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And we will simplify negative negative 3 to positive 3. Under the radical, negative 3 squared becomes 9. And two, 4 times 2 times 7 becomes 56. And it's positive because negative 4 times negative 7 is going to make a positive answer. And then in the denominator, 2 times 2 is 4. Now 9 plus 56 is going to make 65. And in the denominator, still 4. And we're, I think, lucky here because five, uh, 65 is 5 times 13. And there's no way to simplify this. So that actually means our job is finished. And we get 3 plus 65 over 4 and 3 minus 65 all over 4. One last one. Here we've got 2x squared plus 7x equals 0. This one does not have a constant term, but remember it can be factored by GCF. 
So we, we looked at one like this when we did the, the factoring lesson. We factor out a common factor of x. We're allowed to do that because we do have a zero over here. So there's no number we have to worry about, no constant. And now if x times this factor is zero, one of my factors has to be zero. x itself could be zero. Or 2x plus 7 could be zero. And if that's the case, then x is negative 7 over 2. So in this case, my two solutions are 0 and negative 7 over 2.